We're pleased to be joined by Dr. Richard Carson from Yale University. Now you are the recipient of the Henry Wagner Jr. Lectureship. That's Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And you're going to be lecturing on quantitative nuclear imaging. What does that mean? So our field is, is very unique in the way that we have the ability to measure in human beings a huge range of their biology and their physiology related to understanding basic mechanisms in the body as well as how that can apply in disease, both helping and tracking individual patients and assessing drug treatment. In doing that, we create images with our in unique radiopharmaceuticals, the radioactive molecules that we inject. The trick becomes when we collect these images, how do we interpret them? How do we generate numbers, not just pretty pictures? And this has been a part of our field since its inception. And in fact, uh, nuclear medicine has been re really at, at the leadership in medicine in trying to be quantitative and being able to extract numbers. So we don't just say yes or no, we're saying how much. We're saying how much does it change? How much does it change in different parts of the body, in different patients, on different drug treatments, et cetera. So I think this is the basis of, of this lectureship is to think about and, and talk to our audience here, the society, to think about how we've been doing it, how we might be able to do it better, and what we might have been forgetting as we've gotten so used to doing this day after day for all this time. Okay. What is SUV imaging and why is that important? Right. So SUV stands for standardized uptake value. It's one of the basic approaches that clinicians take in making quantitative measurements in nuclear medicine. And the idea is pretty simple, that when you inject radioactivity in different people, if you want to standardize how much they have, it's just a simple normalization. It corrects for how much we inject and how big you are because the bigger you are, the, the more it has space to spread out. And that has a lot of value, but it might not be accounting for all of the different things that affect it. When we inject a radiopharmaceutical, it goes all over your body. It may clear out your liver or your kidneys. It may go to your target organ or your target tumor, and it may not. And just taking one simple measure may not be giving us all the information that we have. And we've done a lot of work preliminarily in developing these tracers and in evaluating them in animal models to try to understand it. But some of the understanding that we've achieved there doesn't always get translated into clinical practice. The other part is I think there's lots of opportunities to be able to do somewhat more sophisticated analysis and more sophisticated acquisitions that we could do in our patients. We have to decide, is it gonna have value? And we also have to decide, can we fit it into clinical practice? That's the challenge. That's what I'll be presenting tomorrow morning, bright and early, at the, at the plenary session. I understand you're presenting research at this meeting as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So, so we've been really fortunate in the last few years to be developing one of those new radiopharmaceuticals, and it's for something that's going to be able to measure the synapses in your brain. As you may remember, synapses are what connects one brain cell to the next. And in so many diseases of the brain, you lose them, they change, they alter over time. And the most obvious case of that would be an Alzheimer's disease where very specific losses occur in certain parts of your brain. But it's true in Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease and schizophrenia and stroke, et cetera. So we've been, over the last few years, doing the basic research and beginning to do the clinical translation to be able to understand how we can use this brand new tracer in human beings. And so we've been very, very excited to be able to present some of that material to our colleagues here in the society, as well as excited to see how that is spreading out into use all over the world. So what does the future look like five to 10 years from now? Right, so certainly in those, in those areas, in those brain disorders, I think we certainly would not be surprised, and I think we can really expect to see this new imaging agent, something called for SV2A, that it would be yet one more tool that we use in evaluating patients. Nuclear medicine is great because we can look at specific markers, we can measure the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, looking at amyloid, looking at tau, the proteins that are found, that you, in the past, you needed to be, to be able to take your brain sample and do a post-mortem measurement, now we can do it in the live human being. And the exciting part is if the treatments are, which are hopefully are on the horizon for these disorders, we're gonna be able to do those scans to identify which patients will best succeed with those novel treatments. That will be a very good day for our field. Dr. Carson, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to hearing you speak. Great. Thank you very much.